Hello, what's up guys? This is Joni Jurela from Floorball Made Simple and today we will continue the same video series that we began a couple of days ago that focuses on game opening tactics and we will open up the basic concepts of modern top level game opening and some trends in, in this topic as well. This is a really good video for all coaches, all players, uh, despite uh, the age group or level or league level that you are involved in. So please take a look at this video. So the last video ended into a part where we were discussing different ways how to manipulate the field and get some more space into those wide side pockets, which are one of the most important spaces if you want to be successful on opening up the game. And now we will present a, another concept, which is very, very simple and basic one, but you are able to create space to the wide pockets by passing to the center. If you pass to the center once or a couple of times, you will get the formation of the opponent's forecheck to squeeze in towards the center, because the ball always attracts the defensive players. Pros by doing this is that you will create more space to the wide side areas, uh, you will have more options to play the ball to the wide sides because if you play the ball to the center line uh, or lane you can pass it directly to the wide side pockets and this is also a very good way to get the ball moving and find some rhythm to the ball position game as in every idea there is few risk factors as well in this um, this will not create absolutely anything uh, threatening towards goal scoring if the ball doesn't end up to those wide side pockets so only passing to the center for for the joy of passing is not enough uh, risk level is relatively high because that pass to the center is not the easiest one to do on the field and play might become quite static if only passing to the center side then a three player line versus a traditional bottom triangle so purpose of this slide is to provide to you an idea that that is the bottom triangle the only way to open up the game and it is not uh, the purpose of using a bottom triangle where you have one player in the bottom and two wide receivers in the wings little above uh, or higher in the pitch um, it is good way to open that way uh, if you want to have those wide passing directions a little bit deeper uh, in those wide side pockets and it is a good way to move the opponent so if your aim is to only to control the ball you are able to uh, move the opponent uh, around the pitch and it is good for remaining the ball control but if you want to progress to the offensive zone this is a terrible way to do it if you use a bottom triangle because the wide side receiver in the pocket will be in a static mo uh, momentum and motion. Often the player will be, will be positioned quite near uh, the next pressing players and will need to do their next choice with the ball in a slow pace, which means defending is rather easy. If you want to progress well or better into the offensive zone, some other shape would be better than that bottom triangle. And for example, a low three-player line that fills those same desired positionings with motion might be a better option. So this is a picture of that uh, traditional bottom triangle. So basically uh, the idea is that if you are facing a W forecheck formation and you play that uh, simple pass to that left side receiver, they will lift with the ball, they will have to take the first touch usually into a rather static uh, momentum and, and positioning. And when they carry upwards in the field, it is rather clear for the center player of that W project that they will need to take care of that player lifting the ball uh, by carrying. So they will not have a high advantage in that one versus one situation on the speed or body direction or movement momentum or movement direction so that will be a very static situation how to progress the game if you want to control the ball it is a good way but if you want to progress into the offensive zone it might not be uh, optimal 
in the other hand, if you organize the players to arrange a three-player low line, this might be better because the players will end up approximately into the same positionings as if they would have been standing still there in that bottom triangle in those wide side pockets. But the difference is that now the receiving player will be in motion towards the opposing team's end, which is a way better situation to receive, to receive the ball. So they will have a speed advantage versus the next pressing players. They will have movement direction advantage. And also the one carrying to the center and passing will be in motion as well and more likely to participate in continuing the play. If a traditional bottom triangle is played, the passer of the ball will be also in rather static movement. There are few cons as well in this. This requires better reading and passing skill from the player with the ball and there's a higher risk factor of this going sideways. Or, or wrong for the pass, so risk is a little higher. And if you are using a bottom triangle, you should at least have some sort of rotation, changing of uh, players' positionings and motion attached to that bottom triangle. And let's let now Sturreta show an example on how you can get some momentum in that bottom triangle opening. Yeah, so I, we saw in that video that that is a one way to get some momentum in there. So when the ball was played to the left hand side pocket, the bottom player was moving and piercing without the ball through the central line. And that created more space to the player in, the, in those deep areas. Uh, my idea is this, that you need to have some movement that goes without the ball to the center as well when you are opening with a bottom triangle and you can do it like in the left hand side picture in a way that the uh, opposite side wide player cuts to the center or in a way that's too rather uh, in the right hand side picture but in the end some movement supporting to the center and winning your markers and if you uh, as a coach or a player or a, or a lineup are, are thinking about should we use a wide back line or a bottom triangle but you cannot make up your mind you can uh, mix them up and make a combination of those and this picture right here provides that so basically you have a wide line of de uh, defenders and then you have one player in the game side wide pocket so this way you will be having the advantages of utilizing a wide back line and you have always uh, also a pocket receiver like in a similar fashion than in a bottom triangle so you have two players in the game side and one in the opposite width and there are many good ways uh, or or good things coming out of this game opening style the pros at this is that the opposite side width will be available at all times. It is easy to start rotations from this. Uh, you have some backup if you decide to swim to the center and then uh, the spaces aren't available, you can make a drop pass and you will still have players lower than you. And this is rather hard to forecheck. If you want to take all of those options out at the same time, there is no forecheck really that can take all of those out at the same time. There are a few cons as well. Uh, play might become a bit static if no one leaves their spaces. Playing might come too much of a drive and drop game and that will not progress into the offensive zone. And it, it might be a little slow paced and static if the ball doesn't change sides. And this is uh, what somebody would call a old but gold, but I call that this is old, but please put it on hold. Because this is, in my personal opinion, just wasting space and receiving players on the pitch. This is not efficient in my eyes. Because 
um, you have now a sort of 1-3-1 formation on opening the game. So you have four players building uh, in the middle zone of the field, which will create a situation that you have only one receiving player in the uh, offensive zone, and that player will be outnumbered in many situations. But there are a few pros by doing this. This is a very safe way to progress over the middle zone uh, because you have usually a numerical superiority uh, to the defensive team. It is an easy way to pass from the center to the width. And that is probably one of the key rationalizations why somebody would use something like this. And even those horizontal passes after you have received the ball in the wide side pocket uh, are less riskier to play through this because you have more players uh, below the ball in those situations. So you can get and create more risky uh, choices from this. The cons are obvious. Terrible, terrible continuity if the deep pass is played because the player will have to hold the ball by themselves and wait for the cavalry to arrive to the situation. This sort of uh, game opening style is very static. There is not much movement if you don't do any rotations and very low speed when you are going to the offensive zone. So if you are using this, you should definitely get some rotation and shiftment, shiftment of positioning if you want to do this well. And this is, in my opinion, not 100 times better, but I would say probably 10 times better way to get the ball from the center and share it to the width. So, but let's let's um, let Pixbo from SSL to show an example how you can utilize this way. So basically, you have two players that provide the width to the game, and then you have one player that provides the central support, meanwhile keeping two players as those receiving players in the depth areas of the field. So if you play the ball, you can play the ball directly with a give and go, that the player plays the ball to the center and then moves by themselves without the ball, like Pixbo did in that picture or a video clip. Or you can do it in this fashion, as in this picture, that you share the ball to the center and they uh, share it to the opposite side. There are many cons by playing it this way. There are less players in the middle zones, so there is more space to use by passing or carrying. There are more players in the deep area, so the continuity to the offensive zone offense will be way, way better. And you are playing this way a 3 versus 3 situation in the middle area, but if you are able to win those lines of pressure with passes, that big middle zone 3 versus 3 will transform into a 3 versus 2 in very big spaces. Although there are few cons as well. This requires more skill and daring because you are playing a 3 versus 3 even strength situation in the middle area and there is a bigger turnover that may occur if you lose the ball and you will get a even worse counterattack in your own end. This is what I call a drop pass robot 2000. This could be sold in, in some sort of um, um, a commercial commercial TV TV sites or, or something. But um, uh, this was a trendy thing like five to seven years ago and every team uh, uh, attempt, attempted to play this way. And this was really boring to watch as a spectator. But this is a very easy way to fill those wide side pockets and create some space to the wide side pockets. And there are many pros also by playing this way. This is easy way to arrange those emptying and filling motions. And this is a good way to defend with the ball. So if you need to take those breathers with the ball or keep the opponent's best lineups out of the ball, this is a good tool to do that. But cons of doing this this is very easy to take away if only drop passes are being played. If you're not progressing with the ball to the offensive zone, this is rather easy to press against. Uh, fillers' movement directions will be to your own end, so it is rather hard to progress into the offensive zone directly from those filling motions, and hard to progress into the offensive zone if the players decide to only 
uh, carry the ball to the center and then drop pass. This is some, some extra information. So if you are struggling to beat a, a solo or singular four checker, that is four checking as a top top four checker uh, in the opponent opponent's team, you should be able to beat that four checker at all times with two players. So if you're facing a formation where there's, there is a solo uh, four checker that will uh, rush around the pitch and, and come rushing to the ball, uh, you should use a two-player back line to beat that guy. And in the left-hand side picture, we can see an example where the four checker is a bit lower, so you can just uh, bravely maintain that wide passing lane and try to look for passes uh, across across the guy. Or in the right hand uh, right hand side picture, you can see that the player is coming rushing uh, all in towards the ball. So a simple way to uh, fool the guy is to pass the ball through the end board to the other side and you have cleared the pressure by only one pass. So that is an ages, centuries old old trick how you can beat a solo for a checker but passing behind your goal in a way that the ball bounces back from the end board to your other uh, wide backline receiver. And here you can see an example on how you can beat a W4 check through the spaces where the W4 check never wants the ball to go. So if you have been struggling on open, opening up those W4 checks, this is a cool tip on that. So a W4 check that is uh, steering you from your standpoint to your right uh, hand side wide pockets, they want you to go that, into that direction. If you want to fool that check you can make a small back line where you have one player more centrally and one player in the left hand side where the ball should never be played if one is using a w4 check so simply a small back line pass to from your standpoint to the left hand side then the player moves with the ball to that left wide pocket where the ball should never be played against uh, or or if the team is uh, playing with a w4 check then their center will come rushing towards that player at the same time fill some player to that central area and you will be able to create that two versus one situation in that gap that is provided uh, with that square area in the picture so there are many pros at, at using this uh, this is rather hard to check with the W4 checking system. You will have a two versus one situation in the center line and you will have a direct scoring threat as well in this situation. Cons by playing like this is that um, the uh, low players in that back line will have uh, quite a low amount of passing options and there's risk factor if you lose the ball, your formation will be rather open for turnovers. And this is another aspect that is used rather frequently in top level floorball which means basically that your opposite side wide player sprints towards the back post and let's let Vaxier from SSL to show an example on how that can be utilized in top floorball games. Now we have gone through the most of the examples, so my message is this, don't do any predetermined set plays that now we are going to use the three player low line and now the player A always passes blindfolded to the player B and then happens that and that. Make principles, flexible principles, how those things can be done and performed through many routes. And if you can create those flexible principles out there, uh, the actions can happen in many different ways. You are way harder to forecheck if those actions happen with various different ways. From many different parts of the pitch, so don't lock your own team by your own thinking and tactics uh, to a some side of the pitch where those movements and actions can only be played. Try to get those actions to pan out from right side pocket, uh, left side pocket and in the central area. That is way harder to forecheck. 
try to do this in a way that many players can make the initiative. If the many players can do that center, left back, right back, uh, the forwards, this will end up in a way that those movements are done throughout the pitch. And by doing it in that way, your formation will start to rotate and other players of your uh, squad need to start filling the spaces in the field. But although you need to have enough repetition and clarity on what you are doing there, so, so sometimes the vers versatility can make the game look rather confusing, so try to get your instructions and tactics clear enough so you can get enough repetition to perform these. And then one cannot just simply go to the games and agree that hey, let's open the game in this way, you need to practice it. Drill those principles down using every single kind of training method and train these well and by doing that you are able to create that flexible work to your games. If you have watched our previous videos, we were talking about that relational play which is a, a counter opposite of positional play. Positional play is the style that most teams use where the players go to occupy spaces and they wait for the ball to arrive to them. Relational play is something where players are moving towards the ball to get it and to try to combine with two to three players and uh, connect with those players. So if you can make those very clear and simple rules of thumb uh, that can make the two to three players to find each other in the field, you will not be making any forced fixed set plays. And I like this idea of relational play that they use in South American uh, football or soccer. And there you have a, a four examples of what kind of rules of thumb they use there in, in Brazil and, and other countries. For example, given goals, there are very basic passing and moving uh, actions. So those can be played throughout the pitch and very simple. One, two play is similar than a give and go. So player passes, uh, the first player passes to the second player and then the second player will have more freedom on how to continue the play. They can pass the ball with a, a, a direct pass back to the player or they can turn with the ball, wait for a bit for the other players to run to even freer spaces and then find that same player uh, back that's, uh, that passed uh, to them at the first point. At the third, uh, we have those dummy runs or running feints, which basically means that you make a distraction run at first, so you're luring the defender in a position that you want, and then you turn into another uh, direction and receive the ball there. And then we have those ladders, so three players are forming these lines, uh, in diagonal, horizontal or vertical directions and you are either passing through the first player to the second and then to the third or you can make a situation where you have one, two, three players and then the second in between those first and third player moves away, you pass from one to three and the third finds the second player that has moved into a free position. Okay, so then a few slides describing those different ways you can make those relational play related rules of thumb, those quick rules of thumb. Uh, we're not going to draw the give and go concept because that is a rather simple one. But uh, in the left hand side, we have an example of that one and two play, which means that player one passes to the player two and the player two can make whatever they want before uh, finding that player one that passed to them. So in this picture, you will see that the player uh, is turning with the ball and then finding a second player. It doesn't necessarily mean that they need to find the same player that passed to them. So they just receive a ball, turn and then find free options. In the right hand side we see an example of a dummy run. So you will have a three player line at first in the low areas on the pitch and the player that passed to that wide side pocket is first making a direct, very fast sprint 
uh, towards opposing team's goal and is trying to attract those defenders to him or her. Then the player will decelerate and move to the wide side pocket and is free over there. So you first make an in, uh, initiative to, to make a distraction run. You go into one direction and fool the opposition that you're going there and then shift your direction into another way. You can utilize both of these throughout the pitch with any kind of way. Try to find out and figure different ways how you can utilize these. And right over here we have two ladders. So those different uh, direction lines that you can utilize. And on the left hand side we see a diagonal line. So we are focusing on three attacking teams players that have positioned themselves in a way that you form a diagonal line. You have one defender, one central support, and the other defender has climbed up the pitch higher to form that diagonal line. So you can basically play it like this. Uh, player is asking the center for a pass, you play a pass or a few to that. Then the player from the center uh, is driving without the ball to the opponent's end. By doing that, you will create some space for a diagonal pass, you can then find a diagonal pass and then find the player that moved uh, to opponent's team goal. So player one is finding the player three with a diagonal pass and the player three finds the player two uh, after it. So this is only a one way how to implement that. And in the right hand side picture we see a horizontal line. So three players are in a horizontal line low uh, down the pitch and the number three player will move to the center when the ball is played from the player one to two and then the player two can find a free pass to that player three that is moving to the goal scoring area so this is a more flexible way sort of to describe to the players how you can utilize those three player lines that we discussed earlier and okay guys, that was it for today's video and thank you for watching this one. And if you watched both of these game opening videos, kudos to you. Because I can guarantee that this was the vastest uh, collection of tips for game opening that has ever been done on Floorball. This uh, contains in total almost an hour of tips on how you can better your game opening. And I can rest assured that each and every one of you got some some new tips if you watched uh, the both videos. Please make these videos go viral. Share these to your teammates, to your colleagues, to coaches in your club and get them subscribed to this channel so you will get even more of this good info. Like the video, subscribe to the channel. You can hit me up on my socials any day of the week you want. But hey, thank you.